Welcome everyone to another week of Blast Cast. Once again with me is my bastion of common sense, Lightning Dragon. And of course this week we have the 2.6.1 out on the PTU and uh, available to tons and tons of people now, not just Steve Okati. And uh, going to have my hands on it quite a bit, uh, easily several hours just today alone and had a few thoughts about it and we'll be getting to that in just a moment. Uh, first thing we want to talk about here is the production schedule update. Uh, I don't see any indication of 2.6.2 being listed anymore and that's most likely because they've managed to integrate the uh, the network that they wanted to do. They have the servers and the, and the different regions already. Uh, when you choose Arena Commander or Star Marine, make sure you select the appropriate region so that you have uh, better ping times than 200. Otherwise you're gonna have a bad time. You're gonna have a bad time. And uh, Basically here, uh, looks like from this point on, we're probably going to be jumping into 3.0 sometime down the road. 3.0 is really important uh, because uh, the things like the pipeline system 2.0, the uh, the AI changes oh, yeah, and things like that. Oh yeah, that pipeline system that was supposed to be in the patch, uh, what was that, uh, 0. 0.6 versions ago? Yeah, it was supposed to, originally I think it was supposed to be in 2.6 and it didn't, it didn't make it. Uh, so you know that includes, by the way, that the 3.0 is also incorporating the turret changes. So there's a lot of things that basically hopefully that, planets that, as yeah. well. Well, one the, the only thing killing, really keeping the 2.6.1 out of the hands of everybody is there's still a couple of bugs I think having to do with network coding, which is once again always an issue, uh, mostly with desync disconnects and things like that. And they're they're working at ironing those out, but that's the major stoppers right now. And those are, those aren't even happening that often. I, I didn't even get disconnected more than once I think when I was uh, when I was playing online so everything seems to be pretty solid overall I think we're definitely going to see a release by the 16th and it wouldn't honestly it wouldn't surprise me to see them release it a little bit sooner than that but we'll see um uh, what, far, what's what's Friday Friday is uh 17th oh. uh, it'll be this week though it'll be this week I, so. I bet it'd be on the, the Friday the 17th because they love releasing patches on Friday that oh, are broken that and then everyone bitches about it all weekend <laughs> Let's not do that. Thursday would be way better. Uh, so, in just in my general experience, what I'm experiencing in, in 2.6.1, first of all, they've increased uh, the flight speed uh, on some ships, but it feels like it still doesn't feel right. Uh, it, it, and the, having, it's really kind of hard to, to explain this. I've had a, I've had decades of flight sim experience, and it feels like it's it's too snappy in the wrong ways and it plays like a first person shooter and not a plane game it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't feel like the stick control doesn't feel natural like it does in a lot of games it feels like it's some, to some degree that i'm still having to fight it's like it's getting some of that old kind of fight you had to get back with a stick and it's not the fight of a challenging game it's a fight of of um, uh, needing to be overly precise it's the it's the gunnery issue that we we brought up before and, and what the AI, also the AI right now, it, boy, I can't wait for a new AI routine because right now this is what the AI does. <laughs> it charges at you, it goes past you, it spirals lazily to the left, because and it, it turns around. Because it knows some maneuvers. Because it knows some maneuvers. And it comes right back, charges at you, goes past you again, and then spirals lazily to the left. That's all it does. That's all you'll see them do ever. And I, the video I'm going to have running in the background, you'll see the combat here. You just watch this happen again. And again, and even the only way you see quote unquote differentiation is if you charge in really close because then basically you're, you're, um, it's, it, you catch it in its turnaround mode and it just goes away from you again and starts spiraling again. It's like, oh, come on. It, it's, it's like you're not even, it's not, it's more like you're playing this weird game of chase than you're actually like dogfighting. He's like, come on, get back here. And chasey, just, chasey, 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 catchy, catchy. Yeah, it is, it is, it, it's, it's weird because it, it feels like the AI doesn't only knows one maneuver and that's it. And it's just, it's like, oh, come on. And as much as I don't like using missiles because I don't like spending the money, I'm like, now lock missile fire. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not even, even going to mess with it. I'm not even going to mess with it. Screw it. You know, I need no more missiles. I'll just go ahead. And since right now, um, uh, you know, I, I think everyone knows at this point. The cheap way to refill your missiles is basically to land your ship and summon the new one. Uh, <laughs> so that's what I'll do. Like, oh, my gladiator's on a missiles. Let's just go ahead and land here. But uh, yeah, so the flight model has a lot of things that that I think need to be addressed. And these things had to happen in, in 3.0. I think a lot of people are waiting for that. I think we're waiting to see what the future of Star Citizen is going to be when it comes to the flight model. Because right now, it's still 
it, it doesn't it doesn't feel right. It, it, it it's it's lack of you have to have limited rotations. You have to have physio, physiologically correct model. And the accelerations, I feel, are too high. There's nothing wrong with having drift on ships. Everything has drift if it has mass. To me, it feels like, to some degree, the large ships have a, a decent amount of drift. I was frying my freelancer, and I was having a blast, because that thing was like, like, it was like driving a sled through the snow. You know, it was like, whoa! But... Cowabunga, dude. Oh, I almost said it. I, I, I barely edged around an asteroid, watching, like, the whole left side of my screen filled with rock as I was, like, trying to get around this corner. Like, oh my gosh. But it, that was fun. But to me, that a lot of the fighters feel like they they can, they're able to reverse or change their their course with very little uh, feeling of inertia. Uh, not Escorts as much as I feel it should be. Online. Oh, yeah. sorry, that's a different game. <laughs> and of course, uh, we've had some changes, additionally changes coming out with two point six point one, the most important change ever. And um, I think it's time to go ahead and insert the important things we need oh, to say here. Oh no, no! It's the Hornet Report, starring. Lightning Dragon. Yes, folks, that's right. It's time for the Hornet Report. No! <laughs> Super <sighs> Hornet has finally had its updates, and uh, I'm very happy about it. Updated damage model, and of course, the last video I put out was showing the comparisons. Um, there are some still some issues on it. Uh, basically, uh, one of the issues is that they have these multifunction displays. You have the two on the top, and you have the two that are in front of you. Uh, kind of in the middle, but you know, below the radar, and you have the ones below that kind of stick out like virtual keyboards. For some reason, those right now, uh, the screen display on them is even smaller than the um, uh, than the other ones. Uh, it, it's like really tiny. You zoom all the way in, and you can still barely see it. I'm sure they'll just they'll fix that. But also, you can't change weapon groups right now. It's like one of the one of the um, MFDs. As you scroll through different screens, you don't have any options whatsoever to change uh, weapon groupings, and that can be kind of uh, difficult with a ship like that. But uh, also, uh, the Reclaimer is finally in production, and I really am looking forward to that ship. It's one of the Shut big your boys. Whore mouth. We need the Orion first. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, deal with it. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, that come to think of it, you know, was Salvage supposed to come out first before mine? Yeah, actually, Salvage was supposed to come out first. Um, okay. But the reason the Reclaimer is going to be first over the Orion is because there is no other type of salvaging ship. Okay. So I believe that is why. Which, which well, is the Prospector is in production, too. Yeah, but the Prospector is the mining version, right? They wanted, like, mining yeah. and salvaging. Yeah. But it's like, well, we don't we, we have the small miner, so we'll just build that because it'd be faster than building the Orion. Oh, I agree. I believe, believe the Orion is white-boxed. All it's, it's all dimensioned out, but there's absolutely no textures, and there's no interior as far as I know. But the, the weird thing is, um, if I go on a little tangent here, is the Idris has taken them, like, a year to build. And, and I'm not exaggerating. It's like literally taking them like a year to build it. Yeah. And they expect to build the Reclaimer in like, what, three months? I don't know. I mean, to me, it's like the, the thing is, is, I think what makes it a little bit different is that they're kind of they're not exploring new territory again. What they're doing is they've established a system. They've established a line of textures, a line of graphics. You know, the, these whole, uh, for example, like Drake ships, like the reason they're going back and doing the Cutlass are using the, the, a lot of the textures and effects you're going to see uh, that are in the, that you saw in the Caterpillar are being uh, transferred over into things like the Cutlass. So they've established this these these parameters, and they're and I think having those the initial creation, the first thing you do is always going to be the hardest. It's always going to take the most time. And once they refine their system, uh, I think things go a lot smoother from that point on. At least you'd hope so. And so I I really think it's possible to see uh, reclaimers uh, exploding uh, on the decks of, uh, of, of, of landing pads very soon uh, after 3.0 is released. And I, I really, I really, 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 really want to fly that ship. I can't say, there's not enough reallys on that. That thing to me is gorgeous. It looks like a big version, more bulky or square version of Firefly. And it's just awesome. Except and, for while File 5 had actual cargo, you just have a bunch of machines that rip apart everything and down to its base components. I'll take it. <laughs> I will take it. And um, so I, I was on another note here, kind of a uh, back when we were talking about the whole uh, gunnery issue and things like that. There was a statement made by a developer this week that I, I think deserves the um, 
well, it deserves a little bit of a face palm here, but uh, the quote is, We launched an investigation into the prominent lag issue during last stand battles on Echo 11 and held a feedback session about gamepad controls. And they're talking about Star Marine. Now, does anyone here honestly feel that they can make uh, gamepad controls compatible with an FPS on the PC game platform? Uh, not without a massive amount of auto-aim. I, I, I see this is weird they're focusing now on first order controls for fps and we have zero order controls for flight and that's backwards that's the 180 that's, that's that's completely backwards not to mention they are only talking about the gamepad they don't mention anything about a mouse or anything like that i mean I, i've played more halo on uh, xbox 360 than i played of like any other first person shooter ever um while i have played a lot of arma 2 um it's it's arma right you don't go in there with the gamepad it's, it's more precision and accurate so oh, yeah. so for me games like gta and, and halo uh, gta for the pc it's just normal for me to use a gamepad and there's nothing wrong with it. It's just like, that's how I enjoy playing the game. It's easier for me to play it that way. Oh, but yeah. as far as, like, well, flying a ship, mm. I mean, I could probably fly a ship with the gamepad, but I prefer to use the joystick. Well, that's still a first-order control device. I see, well, like, yeah. when I'm playing Grand Theft Auto, uh, like, whenever I'm doing the shooting part, the, 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 you know you know how I basically were driving and I need to shoot? I, like, put my controller down, and I drive with the keyboard, and I'm shooting with the, and I'm shooting with the mouse. Uh, I know the driving isn't as accurate at that point in time, but the gunnery is way So better. that's why your driving is so shit. Yes, basically. <laughs> um, so the thing is, yeah, is that the, the when I fly... Five... Or the, the driving is easier with the, the, the gamepad. Yeah, absolutely. But the shooting is way different with the, the, the mouse. It's You have no rumble. Of course, you can turn that off. Yeah. But you have this exact pixel-perfect you know, shooting thing as opposed to general areas. And I've learned to be pretty decent at it. But there are some times when it's like, we're like, we need to kill this dude right now. I will reach over and grab the mouse and fire at that dude because I know I can be better shot. Yeah, exactly. And there's 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 no comparison for me. So I, I having all those controls here when it comes to vehicles, uh, GTA does everything well, puts the vehicles on, uh, on first order uh, is where you get the best control. And um, I mean, I won't even try to fly a helicopter with the with the mouse and ugh, it's just it's not worth it. Uh, but so basically, the problem I have with this 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 focus is that when Chris talked originally about this was one of the statements that was kind of a fallacy. Uh, a lot of people feel this way is that uh, a stick for flying, mouse for aiming, uh, when actually the mouse can do flying in first order just as well as a stick can. And the thing is, so now what is it? Gamepad for moving, mouse for shooting. I mean, so also need... <laughs> mouse for flying. Yeah. Also, mouse for gunning, a mouse for running. You just just take your keyboard and throw it away. Take take your <laughs> gamepad, throw it away. Three or four take, take take your joysticks and hold it. Throw them away and just get a really really nice mouse with like two hundred buttons on it. And that's all you need to play. <laughs> that's it. It's just it's just the mouse game. Well, yeah, the complexity needs to be there, and the con the controls need to be set up in such a way that um, there, there's a certain reason that that certain things are done in, in games that are consistently seen from one game to another. It's because they're established and they've been proven out to work. A round wheel is round. Making it square isn't going to make the wheel roll any better. And, like, for example, when Elite Dangerous was being developed, now I know some of you don't like Elite Dangerous, but this is just a development issue. This isn't about the flight model, whether or not you like it or not. That's not the issue. They decided on a couple factors. One, there would be no arrow indicating where the where the direction to turn closest to the enemy they want people to use their radar and their systems well we have a, we have a very arcadey kind of arrow um in our flight always kind of shows hey if you pull up or turn right you're this is the closest direction to your enemy and to me that takes away uh some of the flight experience basically it's follow the arrow it's chase the arrow that's one of the reasons they got rid of it they said they found that when they had the arrow that people were always just turning towards the arrow and flight became very boring and very everyone was just running circles around each other and it was just, it was a smart decision um the other thing was is they limited rotations not while i don't agree that we need to have limited rotations to the extent that that elite dangerous does the limited rotations were based on to some degree uh, in my opinion, I, they wanted to have, while they, it's hard to black out Elite Dangerous, though I've gotten close once with one of my ships, uh, basically, uh, 
they were it looks like they're trying to go for a more atmospheric or uh, as some people put it flight model but i would state more of a physiologically correct model uh, basically more pitch and roll is more preferred and, and and that's because the way the human body uh, handles g-forces. Now, that's not Elite Dangerous' reasoning. They just wanted a more atmospheric flight model. They wanted it to be don't... atmospheric flight model in space. Yeah. And that basically flat out said, that's what it's going to be. If you don't yeah. like it, well, that's too bad. Because this yeah. is the game we're going to make. Exactly. So and, that, and I don't I want the flight model them. like that. Yeah, but I, they, I can respect them for saying, this is how we're going to make the game. If you don't like that, well, I don't care. It, you know, but, but this but the is the game is, we're going to make. Yeah, but the thing is, is that, you know, love them or hate them. Frontier, they said... This is what we're doing. This is how we're going. This is our plan. We're going for it, and they made exactly what they said they were going to do. There has been a lot of um, shuffling around in the concepts of how flight's going to work. We they talk about things like mapping out the the blood and the uh, oxygen levels and the blood in our in our avatars. Okay, and at the same time, uh, they, they they want to map this oxygen. They give us a flight model that uh, blow up in two seconds. Well, the, well, the, like it takes longer now, but uh, but but I'm Two and about, a half seconds. <laughs> they give us a flight model that basically uh, you have very little punishment for doing lateral, which that should actually uh, be a very uh, should not be the way you would want to turn. You want to do pitch and roll, and, and the short so it's version like these, these of this long tangent is they want it to be contradictory realistic, images, but, <laughs> but they're not doing anything that makes it realistic. Yeah. We want yeah. it to be super deep and very realistic. And on the other hand, they're like, oh, make it like arcade mode because everybody loves that. Yeah, yeah. It's an identity crisis. And this is why I, I'm really starting to think in to some degree, and, and a lot of people will probably disagree with this as well, but I would like to see a hardcore server for Star Citizen. Like, okay, you you know, everyone, you want to play this no, kind of No third-person camera at all whatsoever right. in any form. Yeah, exactly. No third-person camera. First order controls no, no, were appropriate. No, I am. Hopefully they get rid of that All anyway, right. Automation but... only for gimbals or, or, or during, running through a Rio seat. I mean, I would like to see a, a hard version of it, and I would really think that would be uh, be beneficial to a lot of people who are looking for a deeper experience because if, if this identity crisis to me is becoming very apparent. They're, like, they're trying to design two different philosophies that no ever mesh well with one another, and I think they have a lot of work to go. And 3.0 is going to be the proof in the pudding. Uh, and I've already seen a lot of people in the Katamari uh, in the last couple of weeks who've gotten refunds now. And that's, some of these people have had thousands upon thousands of dollars into it and they're getting their money back. And it's, it's disheartening because these guys are really great. They've really cared about the game. They've been trying their best to try to, to, to push things forward. And uh, when you, you can't start losing your whales like this because this, these are the guys that would be around in 10 years still spending money on your game. So here's hoping that they, they get something or going Or, at the very least, these people will bring their friends in who may have been like, no. oh, well, well one, tell me when it's a full game. Well, yeah, well, one guy one guy mentioned uh, that he had, uh, he and his friends, and something like that they had all gotten refunds. It amounted to something like $27,000 or something like that. And they all pulled out. Uh, and it was just like, ouch, you know, that's a big kid. That's, a, that's like someone's salary. Uh, so, yeah, uh, but basically, so, yeah, it's one of those things that, they need to get their identity and figure out what it is they're trying to do. And, and if they know what they're trying to do, then let us know, please. Over over a year ago, they promised us a design document for what the intended flight to be. And this happened in the Katamari, maybe one of the last times that they've been posted in there. And it never came to fruition. We never got this, this deep design document. Didn't happen. And so it's one of those things that we still don't know because no one's told us. Um. We've and, gone from open development to hush hush. We're, we'll tell you what we want to tell you when we're ready to tell you. But you know, aside from all that, I can just say, just back on the subject of two point six point one at the moment, uh, guys. I think it's I think it's very solid. I think it's going to come out this week. I think it'll be I think it'll be fine. Just um, I don't see any reason for them not releasing it. Just have fun with it. I think we're all kind of waiting for three point zero with bated breath. You know, with the pipeline system and all of it. Um, We'll just have to, to to see where the game goes in in the next six months. You know, it's it's this is really down to the wire. This is a lot of people want to say, you know, hey, it's alpha. You know, don't you know cut them some slack. Well, now is the time to talk, because the thing is, is that when are you gonna what are you gonna say next? Oh, well, it's just beta. Oh, it's just released and give them let them patch post launch or something. Oh, well, wait uh, for the day one patch. The yeah. day one patch was three years ago. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's basically the long, the long and the short of it. But also, want to let you know that uh, 
Lightning Dragon here is doing a Subnautica series, and his first episode is online, and I'm going to have a link at the end of the video if you want to see him uh, go around and drown himself in the deep Actually, ocean. Actually, uh, episode two should be up as well, but now. Oh, okay. Well, there or, you or uh, depending on when you do this, if you do it really early, um, <laughs> the Blast Cast will actually be before it, but episode two will be out shortly. <laughs> there you go. One or the other, so as advertised, so... All right, guys. Well, this thank you for listening to another week of Blastcast, and uh, we will catch we'll you next time. Slowly go insane in Subnautica. Just, 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 if you yes, want to so, see me flip my shit out? That's the series to watch. Yes, yes, you definitely want to see him flip his shit out. <laughs> All right, guys. Catch you later. Bye, bye.